We sit or kneel to pray. In humble expectation we pray, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, the first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. <clears throat> the second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed for us. Let us therefore rejoice by putting away all malice and evil and confessing our sins with a sincere and true heart. Like Mary at the empty tomb, we fail to grasp the wonder of your presence. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Like the disciples behind locked doors, we are afraid to be seen as your followers. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Like Thomas in the upper room, we are slow to believe. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We stand for the glory. <clears throat> Together we say, Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Almighty God, whose Son, Jesus Christ, is the resurrection and the life, raise us who trust in him from the death of sin to the life of righteousness, that we may seek those things which are above where he reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We sit for readings from the Bible. The first reading is taken from the book of Acts, chapter 9, starting to read at verse 36. In Joppa there was a woman named Tabitha, who was a believer. Her name in Greek is Dorcas, meaning a deer. She spent all her time doing good and healing the poor. And at that time she became ill and died. Her body was washed and laid in a room upstairs. Joppa was not very far from Lydda. And when the believers in Joppa heard that Peter was in Lydda, they sent two men to him with the message, Please hurry and come to us. So Peter got ready and went with them. When he arrived, he was taken to the room upstairs, where all the widows crowded round him, crying and showing him all the shirts and coats that Dorcas had made while she was alive. Peter sent them out of the room and knelt down and prayed. Then he turned to the body and said, Tabitha, get up. She opened her eyes, and when she saw Peter, she sat up. Peter reached over and helped her get up. And then he called all the believers, including the widows, and presented her alive to them. The news about this spread all over Joppa, and many people believed in the Lord. 
Peter stayed in, on, on, in Joppa for many days with a leather worker named Simon. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading is taken from Revelation chapter 7, beginning at verse 9 to verse 17. After this I looked, and there was an enormous crowd. No one could count all the people. They were from every race, tribe, nation, and language, and they stood in front of the throne of the Lamb, dressed in white robes and holding palm branches in their hands. They called out in a loud voice, Salvation comes from our God, who sits on the throne and from the Lamb. All the angels stood round the throne, the elders and the four living creatures. Then they threw themselves face downwards in front of the throne and worshipped God, saying, Amen. Praise, glory, wisdom, thanksgiving, honour, power and might belong to our God for ever and ever. Amen. One of the elders asked me, who are these people dressed in white robes and where do they come from? I don't know, sir. You do, I answered. He said to me, these are the people who have come safely through the terrible persecution. They have washed their robes and made them white with the blood of the Lamb. That is why they stand before God's throne and serve him day and night in his temple. He who sits on the throne will protect them with his presence. Never again will they hunger and thirst. Neither sun nor scorching heat will burn them because the lamb who is the center of the throne will be their shepherd and he will guide them to springs of life-giving water and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. This is the word of the Lord. <coughs> Our second hymn is from the sheets. Who are these like stars appearing? We stand to see.
Alleluia, alleluia. I am the first and the last, says the Lord, and the living one. I was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Alleluia. The Gospel is written, the Gospel according to St. John, the 10th chapter, beginning to read from verse 22. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. It was now winter, and Jesus was in Jerusalem at the time of Hanukkah, the festival of dedication. He was in the temple, walking through the section known as Solomon's Colonnade. The people surrounded him and asked, How long are you going to keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. Jesus replied, I have already told you, and you don't believe. The proof is the work I do in my Father's name. But you don't believe me because you are not my sheep. My sheep listen to my voice, I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish. No one can snatch them away from me, for my Father has given them to me, and he is more powerful than anyone else. No one can snatch them from the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. As we stand, let us pray. Dear Lord, we ask that as we consider your teaching and the teaching of Scripture, so it may help us and guide us with our lives. In Jesus' name, Amen. Please do sit down. I'm guessing that not many of you are looking forward to shaking Jesus' hoof. No? No, well, you see... There's quite a lot of confusion around uh, some of the imagery in the Bible and some of the uh, metaphors and picture language that is used to describe uh, Jesus, describe God, describe heaven, and describe those things that we don't fully understand. And one of those pictures that's very strong, particularly in the book of Revelation, is the idea of the Lamb. And uh, we talk about Jesus being the lamb. But I don't think any of us imagine that we're going to go to heaven and shake him by the hoof. It's a picture. And yet, some of the other pictures that are used in Revelation, in other bits in the Bible, people don't seem to see as pictures. They see them as a literal or uh, something that we need to build literal things upon. Uh, and so there has been attempts to try and shape the worship of the church on earth to match the worship in heaven by uh, replicating what is told in the metaphors and images and visions of Isaiah and John and uh, some of the uh, ways that worship has been built are built around, well, this is the worship of heaven and we must learn to do it. I suspect the worship of heaven is glorious, but it probably doesn't go on all day and all night with everybody involved all of the time. After all, the images that also appear are such that the uh, city of, uh, that's portrayed as the city of God is, I'm told, larger than Europe, if you measure it, so it's a pretty big place, and I don't think that the temple would be one of those places where everybody could be uh, together if they lived in a place the size of Europe, or those who are um, called to be uh, the sheep of God, those who hear his name and follow him. So what do we make of these pictures and images? How do we use them? How do they help us and how do they, we avoid the confusion that sometimes can be thrown at us? We need to look, I think, to um, the, the essence of what they're about. And uh, 
We don't have much of an understanding of the sacrifice of lambs, and we don't have uh, much of an understanding of uh, keeping sheep in uh, biblical times. And we certainly don't come from that world that of Judaism where, you know, people were beholden. They just knew that the sacrifice of the lamb, the Passover, the regular uh, re react reenacting of the Passover, the sacrifices in the temple were so important to actually their connection to God. And that being transformed into a connection to God which could be had directly with Jesus through the Holy Spirit, a direct connection rather than having to go to the temple, particularly after the temple was destroyed, was very, very meaningful to them and absolutely not meaningful to us. Um, but we can capture some of that meaning because we have the truth of the direct access to God. Each of us is able, because of what Jesus has done, because of his existence at the heart of the kingdom of God, we are able to have direct access to God and long-term access to everlasting life. We who know him and are his sheep are those who hear his voice and are enabled to be free and have the wonder of amazing connection to the King of Kings, the creator of the universe, the God who is all-powerful. And so that is an excitement that we can grasp through looking at this, through imagining it, through imagining the wonder of it all. Of course, we don't have the idea that uh, blood can wash things white. I think most of us would have blood stains things really badly. Um, but for them, the cleansing of blood was one of those things that was part of their inner being, part of their, what they understood. And for us, the wiping away of sin and all that has gone wrong is and should be something that is still very real because we need to be set free from that which has gone wrong. We need to be those who are free from uh, the hurts and pains of life, who are able to find forgiveness and able to live out forgiveness. We can live in the reality of the blood that wipes us, uh, that washes us as white as snow, even though uh, we're not really connected to those as images. We can be those who are free from whatever and whatever has destroyed and caused harm and whatever has hurt and whatever is hurting. We can find healing and hope and direction because of what Jesus does for us because of the God who has the power to touch us. So these images, if we begin to get behind them, still speak to us today. They still speak to us of things that give us hope and uh, everlasting strength. And the strength and great hope of the Revelation story is this wonderful image of a place which is going to be free from all that hurts. So those who have been washed in the blood of the Lamb, will never again be hungry or thirsty. They will never be scorched by the heat of the sun. Uh, for those of us who live in uh, England, uh, now that global warming is coming, we might, no, no, we won't ever understand that. Uh, but for those who lived in the deserts <coughs> of Arabia, the scorching heat of the sun, those who really knew thirst, they could understand this image, this image that not being thirsty, not being parched, not being at the point where you're thinking, I'm about to die and what am I gonna do? Help, 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 because that's what it feels like. That's the thing that has been set free. That's where we stand in the future, free from that. We will never be hungry or thirsty, never scorched by the heat of the sun. And we will be led to springs of life-giving water. And God will wipe away 
every tear from our eyes. Wipe away every tear from our eyes. There are images here which we can find which are helpful to us. There are things that can strengthen and support us as long as we don't get confused by trying to draw straight lines between the images and the reality. But find behind the images the reality, the reality of the experience and truth of what God is speaking to us. So we ask that God may touch us and help us to know him, to know him through who he w is and what he does, and in that experience to find life. Amen. We stand for the affirmation of faith. <clears throat> Let us declare our faith in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures. He was buried. He was raised to life on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. Afterwards, he appeared to his followers and to all the apostles. This we have received and this we believe. Amen. We sit on the for our prayers of intercession. Let us pray to the Father who loved the world so much that he sent his only son to give us life. Simon from Cyrene was forced to carry the cross for your son. Give us grace to lift heavy loads from those we meet and to stand with those condemned to die. Lord, hear us. Lord. Your son watched the soldiers gamble to share his clothes. Transform the hearts of those who make a profit from their victims and those whose hearts are hardened by their work. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. The thief who was crucified with Jesus was promised a place in your kingdom. Give pardon and hope, healing and peace to all who look death in the face. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. In Mary and John, your son created a new family at the cross. Fill our relationships and those of new families today with mutual care and responsibility and give us a secure hope for the future. Lord, Hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. The centurion was astonished to see your glory in the crucified Messiah. Open the eyes of those who do not know you to see in your Son the meaning of life and death. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Joseph of Arimathea came to take your son's body away. Give hope and faith to those dying and bereaved and gentleness to those who minister to them. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Simon and Joseph, Mary and John became part of your church in Jerusalem. Bring into your church today a varied company of people to walk with Christ in the way of his passion and to find their salvation in the victory of his cross. Lord of the church, hear our prayer and make us one in heart and mind to serve you in Christ our Lord. I publish the bands of marriage between Luke, Richard Henderson and Jade Megan Griggs, and between Stephen Sims 
and Donna Leftress. If any of you know cause or just impediment why these persons should not be joined together in holy matrimony, ye are to declare it. These are for the second time of asking. Let's pray for Luke and Jade, for Stephen and Dan. Dear Lord, we ask that you will watch over these couples, help them to grow deeper in their love for each other, help them to find ways to build their homes as places of security and strength for each other, and help them as they go out from those homes to live lives full of all that is good. In Jesus' name, amen. We stand to share Christ's peace together. <clears throat> the risen Christ came and stood among the disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of that peace. Our future hymn is number 784. Jesus, true vine and bread of life, ever giving yourself that the world might live, let us share your death and passion and make us perfect in your love. Amen. We sit or kneel for the thanksgiving prayer. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Almighty and Eternal Father, and in these days of Easter, to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful works. For by the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your risen Son, has conquered the powers of death and hell, and restored in men and women the image of your glory. 
He has placed them once more in paradise and opened to them the gate of life eternal. And so, in the joy of this Passover, earth and heaven resound with gladness, while angels and archangels and the powers of all creation sing forever the hymn of your glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit. The broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence, his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms. And bring us with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven, through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Let us pray with confidence, as our Saviour has taught us. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Humbly we pray. <coughs> Most merciful Lord, your love compels us to come in. Our hands were unclean, our hearts were unprepared. We were not fit even to eat the crumbs from under your table. But you, Lord, are the God of our salvation and share your bread with sinners. So cleanse and feed us, 
with the precious body and blood of your Son, that he may live in us and we in him, and that we, with the whole company of Christ, may sit and eat in your kingdom. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. Merciful Father, you gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the Good Shepherd, and in his love for us to lay down his life and rise again. Keep us always under his protection, and give us grace to follow in his steps. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Together we pray. 
faithful God, in baptism you have adopted us as your children, made us members of the body of Christ, and chosen us as inheritors of your kingdom. We thank you that in this Eucharist you renew your promises within us. Empower us by your Spirit to witness and to serve, and send us out as disciples of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. God the Father, by whose glory Christ was raised from the dead, strengthen you to walk with him his risen life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Our final hymn today is number 689, We Stand to Sing. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.